Hello students, last time we have completed the Rutherford's model of atom according to which an atom is made up of a centrally quite small volume in which whole of the positive charge and almost uh, all the mass of an atom is concentrated. That small volume of the atom which lies at its center that is known as the nucleus. And today our topic is the distance of closest approach and from this concept uh, we will see how size of the nucleus, how size of nucleus can be determined, approximate dimensions of the nucleus can be determined. Now first of all let us see what is distance of closest approach. It is the minimum distance from the nucleus up to which an energetic alpha particle traveling directly towards the nucleus can move before coming to rest and then retracing its path that is known as the distance of closest approach. That means when an energetic alpha particle is made to incident on an atom, if the alpha particle as is suppose this is the nucleus of the atom, this is the nucleus of the atom which contains the positive charge of that atom, whole of the positive charge and we know that the alpha particles they are also partially charged particles having charge plus two units. Let us suppose the kinetic energy of these alpha particles is E times K and these alpha particles they are moving towards the nucleus. As the alpha particle is moving towards the nucleus we know that the interaction there is an interaction coulomb interaction between the partially charged alpha particle and the nucleus of a particular atom. As the particle charge as the alpha particle is moving towards the nucleus, it is kinetic energy is being converted into potential energy because of the coulombic interaction, because of the coulomb interaction between the alpha particle and it, the nucleus. Why? Because the interaction is the forces which they are exerting on one, or one another, any yani alpha particle it is exerting force on the nucleus and nucleus it is also exerting force, coulomb force on the alpha particle and these forces are conservative forces and we know that in case of conservative forces the kinetic energy of the system if they are interact, if there is a uh, interaction between any two particles through conservative forces then the total mechanical energy remain as constant of the system, yani ki sum of kinetic energy and the potential energy. Same is the case here, we are applying the same concept in determining the distance of closest approach. So before determining the distance of closest approach, <coughs> before determining the distance of closest approach, Rutherford made the following assumptions. He made the following assumptions. What are those assumptions? that the atomic nucleus, he assumes that the alpha particle with which, because when the alpha particle is made to incident on the file, gold file in alpha scattering experiment, the nucleus of the gold atom, because it, it interacts with the, it is scattered due to the interaction with the nucleus of the gold atoms. And the assumptions made by the Rutherford in determining the distance of closest approach, what are those assumptions? Assumption number one, as I show you with the arrow first, that the atomic nucleus is so heavy that its motion during the impact is disregarded. Actually, when, the, when these are interacting each other, actually they are exerting forces on one another, that means there is a collision between the alpha particle and the nucleus. During this collision, during this impact, it was assumed, rather for assumed that the nucleus of the atom is so much heavy, it is very much heavy and because of its heaviness, because of its inertia, its motion during the impact is disregarded. We neglect its motion because its motion is almost zero. It will not move at all. That is why he says we will disregard its motion, we will, reject, we will neglect its motion. And the nucleus and the alpha particle both are taken as the point charges having no dimensions. Point charges means ki whose dimensions are so small which can't be measured. They are because we know that because the Coulomb force is applied to the point charges. This was the assumption made by the Rutherford on the basis of which he determines the approximate size of the nucleus. 
and third that the scattering is due to the elastic collision between the alpha particle and the nucleus the interaction between the alpha particle the impact between the alpha particle and the nucleus that is elastic in nature there is an elastic collision we know that in case of an elastic collision both momentum since momentum is conserved in all the collisions but in addition to momentum the mechanical energy that is the sum of kinetic and potential energies also conserved so therefore by keeping these things in view let us see how rutherford arrives at the conclusion how he determines the approximate size of the nucleus now in order to determine the dimensions of the nucleus keeping these three assumptions in mind let us see how he calculates the approximate size size of the nucleus now let us suppose this is an alpha particle which is the which is also a positively charged uh, nucleus of a helium atom let us suppose the initial kinetic energy of this alpha particle is e of k and this is the nucleus let us suppose the charge of the nucleus is suppose z times e because is you know that is the basic unit of the charge let us suppose the charge of the nucleus of the atom is some z times e and the charge of the alpha particle we know that that is plus 2e this is plus plus 2e this is plus 2e now when they are at infinite separation these the net kinetic net mechanical energy of the system that is the system here is the alpha nucleus alpha particle and the nucleus of the atom this is our system when they are at infinite separation when there is no interaction between the alpha particle and the positively charged nucleus there the energy of the system is only due to the kinetic energy of the alpha particle but as the alpha more particle is approaching to the nucleus as it is approaching to uh, it starts interacting with this that this will repel this will exert repulsive forces and because we know that the repulsive force as exerted by the nucleus that is conservative in nature that convert is that convert is the kinetic energy because as it is approached this will repel it with the result that the kinetic energy of the alpha particle will decrease that will decrease and that decrease in kinetic energy will appear as a potential energy of the system that will that will appear as a potential energy of the system we know that what is the potential energy of the two charged particle when they are at a certain separation let us suppose if we have some charge q1 and we have another charged particle some q2 they are at at a separation of suppose r then the potential energy which we denote by u that is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught in free space that is equal to some q1 into q2 divided by r this is the potential energy between the system of two charged particles which are at a separation of r in free space similarly as this nucleus as this alpha particle is approaching to the nucleus of the atom it is kinetic energy decreases 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 continuously why because of the repulsive forces due to the repulsive forces of this nucleus positively charged nucleus so therefore as we know the from the definition it is the minimum distance this is, this is the closest distance of the alpha particle before it comes to rest when it approaches let us suppose it reaches to here and here it comes to rest because uh, as the alpha particle is approaching Uh, that means the distance between the alpha particle and the nucleus starts decreasing when the distance decreases the repulsive force start increasing that is more and more repulsive force is exerted on the alpha particle by the nucleus and at a particular point this point particular distance suppose r not where it comes to momentarily at rest after this it is kinetic energy come 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 it starts decreasing decreasing decreases decreasing and at the distance when it is at is only at a distance of r not and the closest approach the closest distance between the nucleus and the alpha particle where the alpha particle comes to rest here it will come to rest it is kinetic energy becomes zero after this because of the repulsive forces continuously acting on this it will retrace its path and it will move in backward direction 
Now, therefore, at this closest approach, we can say that why does the kinetic energy of the alpha particle goes? That actually is being converted into the potential energy of the system. Now, kinetic energy before the what is the mechanical energy of the system? Before the collision, when they are at infinite separation, that is equal to the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. There is no potential energy of the system at that instant when they are at, at an infinite separation. Infinite separation when there is no interaction between the nucleus and the alpha particle. Now, when it reaches to the closest approach, what is mechanical energy of the system? That is kinetic energy, final kinetic energy of the system, final kinetic energy of the system plus the potential energy of the final potential energy of the system. So, this is the initial potential energy of the system was zero. Now, what is the final kinetic energy? As in the assumption we have seen, we have assumed that the, the mass of the nucleus is, the nucleus is so much heavy because whole of the mass of the atom is concentrated there as was assumed by the Rutherford and therefore because of it is larger mass, because of it is larger inertia, it is motion during the impact was neglected. So therefore the kinetic energy of this is zero. And at the closest approach, the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is also zero. So therefore, we can say the kinetic energy of the system is zero. That is zero. Plus, potential energy. Since potential energy between two charged particles. Here the two charged particle is the alpha, alpha particle having charge plus two units and the nucleus having charge plus ZE. So therefore, we can say this is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, Q1, Q1 is the charge of the suppose alpha particle that is plus 2E and Q2, it is the charge of the nucleus that is plus ZE, let us suppose the distance at the closest approach is R naught, so therefore when they are at the separation of R naught, the mechanical energy of the system is in the form of the potential energy. Z into twice E square divided by R naught. So this is the this was the initial mechanical energy of the system. This is the final mechanical energy of the system. Mechanical energy means sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy. And we know that in case of a system in which the constituents of the system are interacting each other through conservative forces, then the mechanical energy of the system remains conserved. So we will apply the conservation of the mechanical energy. So therefore, E final, E initial must be equal to E final. E initial is equal to E final. Or we can write it as what is E initial, that is Ek, that is kinetic energy of the alpha particle, this is the kinetic energy, this is the kinetic energy of alpha particle, alpha particle, Ek is the kinetic energy of alpha particle which is equal to Z to E square by or we can write it as some K twice Z E square divided by R naught, where K is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught or here we can write it as K twice Z E square by R naught, which implies that R naught can be written as R naught will goes here. It is K twice Z E square divided by E of K. So, this is the expression for the distance of closest approach. So, obviously, the radius of the nucleus must be less than this distance of closest approach here. The radius of the nucleus is this. 
So obviously the distance of closest approach, that is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the center of the alpha particle, obviously that is greater than this. So this will give the approximate size. The size of the nucleus will be less than this. That will be less than this. Now let us calculate for the golden nucleus, what is the size of the nucleus? If we know the kinetic energy of the alpha particle, we know the atomic number of the atom of the nucleus with which it interacts and k is a constant 1 by 4 pi epsilon i. We know the value of it is 9 into 10 to the power 9 and is fundamental constant charge of the electron or a proton. Now in the original experiment performed by the Marsden, Giger and Marsden, in that experiment the energy of the alpha particles which are being emitted by the naturally occurring some radioactive element that was found to be 7.7 .7 mega electron volt. 7.7 .7 into that is equal to 1.2 into 10 raised power minus 2 joule. Sorry, minus 12 joule. Minus 12 joule. This is the EK energy of the alpha particles and K that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught which is equal to 9 into 10 raised power 9 and in case of a gold nucleus Z is equal to 79 and E that is 1.6 into 10 raised power minus 19 coulomb. Now after substituting the values, these values in this expression we will get R naught is equal to that is the distance of closest approach that is approximately equal to 3.0 10 raised power minus 14 per meter. This this is the value, although or we can write it as this is equal to 30 Fermi, where 1 Fermi, 1 Fermi is equal to 10 raised power minus 15 meter, 30 Fermi. So that will distance of closest approach in case of the nucleus was found to be 30 Fermi. So from this, the approximate size as concluded by the Rutherford was that the size of the nucleus must be less than the radius of size of the nucleus, the radius of the nucleus is less than this, it is size is. Although the actual size of the golden nucleus, that is of the order of 6 Fermi, huh? the actual size of the nucleus was found to be 6 Fermi, that is much less than this. This is the actual size of the golden nucleus. As I told you, this was the approximate, this will give the approximate size. Not actual size because the alpha particle that is not come in contact with the nucleus. Actual con there is not actual contact between the alpha particle. Before it starts, as, as it is approaching to the nucleus, the repulsive force starts increasing. It converts its kinetic energy into potential energy. And at the closest approach, and it, the whole of the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is converted into the nucleus. And after that, it can't move further towards the nucleus. It can't move further towards the nucleus. What's this? It can't move further towards the nucleus. Here it comes to momentarily rest. And after this, it will retrace its path. It will retrace its path. So therefore, this portion, distance, and in atomic dimensions, it is very large. In nuclear dimensions or, or in atomic dimensions, it is very large. So therefore, he concluded that the nucleus, the size of the nucleus, it is from 10 raised power minus 14 to 10 raised power minus 15 meter. This was the approximate size as postulated by the Rutherford. This is how he concludes that the, we can determine the size of the nucleus. Huh. Atomic spectra. Atomic 
atomic spectra. Now, in the early 19th century, it was established that each element is associated with its characteristic spectrum. When an electric discharge, when a, if we take an atomic gas, if we take an atomic gas, gas or vapor at low pressure, if we take an atomic gas or vapor at low pressure and an electric current is passed through it. Low pressure, why we are keeping the pressure very low? Because when we keep the pressure very low, the atoms of the gas, they will be at a lower separation. We say there is no interaction between the individual atoms. If we take a high pressure, because of the high pressure, these atoms may come closer to one another. There, will, there may be an interaction between the atoms. Now, in order to study the atom, in order to study the spectra of these atoms, what we do? We will keep the pressure very low so that the, their, the atoms of the gas are no longer in interaction. There should be no interaction between these atoms. So we take an atomic gas or a vapor of the atom, atomic gas at very low pressure so that there is no interaction between the atoms. And when an electric current is passed through this atomic gas or vapor, the atoms, these atoms, atoms, they go in the excited state, excited state and they emit radiation. And every atom has it is, when it emits radiation, when these radiations are observed, it was found that these atoms, they emit radiations of particular wavelengths. They don't emit radiations of all wavelengths like a black body. But it was found that these atoms, when they emit, when they are in excited state, how we bring them to the excited state? By passing an electric current through them. When they go into atom state, after dioxiding, they emit radiation. And when these radiations are analyzed with the help of the spectrometer, it was found these radiations form a spectrum. And these spectrum lines, these radiations were of particular wavelength. They were not of all wavelengths. There was, there was no this, uh, continuous spectrum, rather uh, such a spectrum of these atoms in which there existed only particular wavelengths. This is known as the line emission spectrum. Line emission spectrum, which it emits. Light emission spectrum. This is a light emission spectrum. What is light emission spectrum? That means when an atomic gas at low, low pressure, when an electric current is passed through them, they goes into the excited state. After the excitation, if we analyze the emitted radiation, the radiation which they emit during the excitation, these radiation contain wavelengths of, of, of these contain the radiations of only particular wavelengths. Such a spectrum is known as the line emission spectrum. Similarly, if the, it was found that when the white light is also passed through the same gas, same atomic gas or vapor at low pressure, and the transmitted light is observed with the help of the with the help of a spectrometer. Again, it was found that there is a in case of a white light, when the transmitted light is observed, there is a some wavelengths were missing, and the missing wavelengths in the transmitted light, their wavelengths they are having the same wavelength as was emitted by these atoms during their emission, during their emission when they were in excited state when they emit light. In this, they absorb those wavelengths of particular wavelengths which they emit during the excited when they come to the excitation when they come to the uh, lower state. So, such a spectrum only in the dark lines why are observed, dark lines exist in the background because when the light, transmitted light was observed, the, that time, that 
transmitted light was received on the screen and whole of the screen that accuses the white light whole of the screen whole of the screen but in this bright screen some wavelengths there are some dark lines which corresponds to the same wavelength of these atoms which they emit when they were in the excited state while coming to the ground state so such a spectrum this dark lines they correspond to the particular wavelengths also this is known as the absorption line absorption spectrum line absorption spectrum light absorption spectrum this was observed that the atoms they have characteristic the emission and absorb line emission and line absorption spectrum yani ki they emit or they absorb wavelengths of particular radiation they will not emit all the radiations they will not absorb all the radiations which are being incident on these atoms it was observed and simplest of the atom is hydrogen and definitely the spectrum of this atom will be simple and when this when the spectrum of the hydrogen atom was analyzed so it was found there are large number of line spectra of which corresponds to the hydrogen atom and one of the atomic spectra was observed by a scientist which is known as the balmer he found the one of the spectrum of the hydrogen which lies in the visible range visible region and that spectrum which we study later on so that is known as the balmer series so thus we can say that also it was found that the atoms has a property to have a spectrum line emission and absorption spectrum in short we can show say atoms the spectrum of atoms is not continuous rather it is line spectrum whether it is then emission or absorption thus this was about the spectrum atomic spectra in the nuclear rather for the nuclear model which involves the classical concept and picture is the atom as consists of a small positively charged an atom is a spherical in shape which consists of a small massive and positively charged portion which is known as the nucleus which contains the whole of the positive charge and since atom as a whole is electrically neut neutral according to rutherford to make the to make the atom as as a neutral he says that the electrons negatively charged electrons they are revolving around this nucleus in the same way as do the planets around the sun because then it because if we assume that the electron they will lie at a certain distance from the nucleus to neutralize this positive charge to make the atom electrically neutral if we keep the atom stationary these first negatively charges at stationary because of the coulomb interaction it will exert coulombic force and that force will be attract in nature therefore these electron negatively electrons will go into the nucleus and with the result we can say the atom is not stable but rather for to make the atom stable he says the electrons are not stationary in their at a particular distance rather they are revolving around the nucleus and the path followed by the electron around the nucleus they are known as the orbits and he says these dynamically stable orbits that means the electrons are revolving around this nucleus in the same way as do the planets 
Now, the question arises here. In case of a planetary motion, that is the stable system. There is a stability. And Rutherford applies the same thing here. But these electrons, which he says that they are revolving around the nucleus in the circular orbits. Since the electron is electrically charged, it is not electrically like planets, they are electrically neutral bodies and they are revolving because of the gravitational interaction. He says that these electrons, they are revolving around the nucleus and when an object, as per classical physics, when an object is revolving, when it is following the curved path, or here we can say simply a, when it follows the circular path, for that there must be some force which is known as the centripetal force which acts on this revolving bodies towards the center of the nucleus. And here in case of, in case of uh, planets, that centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force between sun and the planets. Here he says that the centripetal force which makes these el electrons to revolve around the nucleus that is provided by the Coulomb force between the nucleus and the electrons. And that is given by F centripetal that is provided by the electrical force, F electric, electrical force between the nucleus and the electron. Now, centripetal force, if the electron is revolving around the nucleus in a orbit, circular orbit of radius, suppose some r, then and the velocity of the electron is suppose some v, this is the speed of the electron, then mv square by r is equal to electric force, that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, that is q, that is charge of the electron, in magnitude we will determine, and ZE, that is the charge of the nucleus, divided by R square, the separation between the two. From this, this R and R will go, R and R will go. So therefore we can write MV square is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught ZE square by R. Now, the energy associated with the revolving electron is kinetic energy as well as the potential energy because the electric force between the nucleus, as I told you, it is conservative in nature. So therefore, because of this interaction, there is a potential energy between these two systems, in this system, because of the Coulombic interaction that is conservative forces and the kinetic energy of the electron which is revolving. So net energy is equal to kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the system which can be written as kinetic energy is one half of mv square plus potential energy is that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught minus e zde divided by r or we can write it as 1 by 2 uh, mv square is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught z e square by r minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught z e square by r which is equal to half minus 1 that is minus half minus half of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught z e square divided by r. Thus we can see the total energy of an electron around the nucleus is equal to minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, z e square by twice r. By twice r. Or this is minus 9 into 10 is for minus 9, 
this is 1.6 into a zadi square or divided by 2 that is 4.5 that is minus 4.5 into 10 is power minus 9 into z e square this is the energy divided by r this is the total energy of an electron which is revolving around the nucleus that energy is inversely proportional to the radius of the orbit if r increases without negative sign then we can say e increases but as r increase uh, as r decreases we can say e increases if we for a time being if we say there is no negative sign then we can say suppose there is no negative sign we can say when r decreases this will increase but with negative sign when we take negative sign the, when we take the negative sign under consideration when we keep it under consideration if r decreases we say this also decreases will not increase because this will become more and more negative. When this decreases, we can say the total mechanical energy of the electron around the nucleus that also decreases. Here negative science say, shows that the electron and nucleus, they are in the bound state. They are in the bound state. This was the, this concept was introduced by the Rutherford to, for the stability of the atom. But there is a some failure of the Rutherford's model. Number one, since the electron, as was assumed by the electron that it is, they are revolving, these electrons are revolving around the nucleus in the same way as, uh, as planets do around the sun. Since planets are electrically charged objects, here the electron is not electrically charged, rather it is a charged objects. From the classical electromagnetic theory, when a, charged when a charged particle is in acceleration, when the charged particle is accelerated, it radiates energy, electromagnetic, it emits electromagnetic radiations. The source of electromagnetic radiation is the accelerated charged particles. Since the, when the electron is revolving around the nucleus, there is an acceleration which is known as the centripetal acceleration. So we can say the electron around the nucleus, the electron around the nucleus is in, has an acceleration. Since when it has an acceleration, so therefore it should emit radiations. As per the classical theory, it will emit radiations. So when, will, when it will emit radiation, that radiation will come as, that radiation that it will emit is with the result, the energy of the electron will decrease. As I told, when the energy decreases, therefore this, all, this should also decrease. Radius of the orbit should also decrease. So therefore, we can say when an electron, it should follow a spiral path around the nucleus. Like this. And finally, it should fall into the nucleus. And finally, it should fall into the nucleus. Because when the accelerated charge, charged particles, it will emit radiation. And that emission of radiation, with the result, its energy will decrease. That decrease in radiation will be on account of its total mechanical energy. That will be on account of its total mechanical energy. So that is possible only when the radiation will decrease. Because when radiation, sorry, ra when radius will decrease, when the radius of the orbit will decrease. This will also decrease and decrease in this energy, total mechanical energy that comes in the form of radiation. That comes in the form of radiation. So from this, this is the limitation of the Rutherford's model. So from this we can say atom is unstable. So Rutherford's model, as per the Rutherford's model, atom is not a stable particle. It, should, it is an unstable. So therefore we can say Rutherford's model of atom could not explain the stability of the atom. It could not explain the stability of the atom. This was the number one limitation. Number two limitation, since in case of atoms, as we have seen, that the atoms, they emit, they have an, the spectrum of the atoms, as observed experimentally, is line emission, line spectrum. 
that is a line spectrum whether it is a line emission spectrum or line absorption yani ki the atoms when they emit radiation their radiation is are of particular wavelength or when they absorb radiation they will absorb radiation of particular wavelength so but according to the electromagnetic theory when the electron is revolving around the nucleus when it is revolving around the nucleus since it is is electrically charged it will emit radiation the frequency of the radiation that depends upon the frequency of the electron uh, in other words the velocity of the electron or frequency of the electron so therefore as the atom when it follows the spiral path it is velocity change and hence it is angular velocity change we can say it is angular frequency change so therefore it should continuously emit radiation is so we can say the radiation is that comes from the atoms as per the rutherford's model the nature of the spectrum if we analyze the spectrum and yani if we analyze the wavelength of these radiation is which are being emitted by the atoms it should be an continuous spectrum but experimentally the spectrum as emitted by the atoms that was line spectrum again we can say it could not explain the line spectrum of the atoms so keeping these two things in view so we can say the rutherford's atomic model was again to some extent there it needed some modifications it could not explain the stability of the atom it could not explain the emission spectrum it could not explain the line spectrum of the atoms so therefore we can say these were the limitations in the rutherford's model of atom